My streak of stealing ideas from Reddit continues, where this time we're doing the N64 logo spin, even though I don't think I've ever played an N64, but does that matter? Uh, no, I'm just gonna show you how to make this thing in Blender super quick, super easy. Uh, but first, there's a sponsor for this video, so let me talk about that. You know what's as cool as the N64 logo spinning? Being safe on the internet, and the way to do that is using the sponsor of this video, NordVPN, on your device. If you're outside using your phone, your laptop, whatever, at a cafe, an airport, wherever else, also use these devices, you are susceptible to people stealing your data and you should care because maybe you have stuff that you don't want to share or maybe you have credit card numbers you don't want to share. I wouldn't want to share mine. Maybe some people do. I wouldn't. Basically, uh, your phone, your laptop, actually up to six devices on your account at the same time can be protected using a single NordVPN account. But there are other benefits beyond just safety, which is already cool in itself. But uh, you also get stuff like region blocking, which is useful if you're trying to access stuff that is blocked in your region. Hint, hint. Netflix, hint, hint, basically uh, any any distributor of shows. And I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be cool if there was like a 30-day money-back guarantee or something like that? Like, I wouldn't want to do something without it. There is. There, there exists a 30-day money-back guarantee. There's literally no reason to not try it out. But if you're looking at NordVPN as a solution to these problems, especially in the long term, I am here to make the deal of getting NordVPN even sweeter. Look at my link in the description. It exists in the description. There's a link. You can click that along with the uh, promo code that I have. You can use Use both of those to get NordVPN for yourself at a discount, so make sure to check those things out. And now let's talk about the N64 logo. Uh, many, many years later than it, it, this video should have come out. I don't know. And we have returned. How do we, we bleh, How do we make N64? Let me show you. First part of this is going to be modeling, which is basically an N that you rotate four times. So it spells out N. Mm. How do we do that? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a text object, uh, go to edit mode, change the text to N. By the way, uh, you could do this with any letter that has this kind of like rotational symmetry. I'm gonna be doing it with an N. Uh, first thing we wanna do is we wanna find a font that has a good amount of thickness, like a, a good, nice, bold and curvy, not curvy, just a nice bold thickness. Um, and uh, for that font, I'm gonna be using, I don't really know, I guess any of these that look super like, in your face and like they'd be on a dystopian poster. I think the one that I used uh, last time was this Deja Vu Sans. I think the one I used last time was this Deja Vu Sans. It's a joke. Um, this one, because it's thick and I think it comes uh, with any copy of Windows. So use this or whatever. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna center it. So set origin, origin to geometry. This is gonna let us center it on the 3D cursor. And then finally, since we can't actually edit this in edit mode, and the reason we'd wanna do that is we just wanna adjust these vertices. Right now it's in text mode. Uh, we need to take this and type in convert to uh, mesh. So now this is a mesh object, not a uh, text object. Yeah, Kate. We can now take this, go into edit mode, and mess around with the vertices. We want to set this up so everything's nice and symmetrical and everything's lined up so that the fitting together is easy. Uh, so take these vertices, scale them on the x-axis by zero so that they're all lined up. Uh, take these, scale them on the x-axis by zero so that, yeah, that they're all lined up. And then I just like to take these two because they no longer, the end doesn't have the same thickness here and here and here. And I scale these together on the y-axis until it looks roughly the correct thickness. Okay. Uh, so we've made our custom letter N, which involved picking a font and modeling. Um, and now we just need to put these pieces together. So in edit mode, I'm just going to select all of these. I'm going to go to the side view uh, just so I can extrude this uh, so that this looks roughly like a square. Uh, you could do this correctly, but I just like to eyeball it because I'm lazy. Um, and then take these, this uh, N, rotate it. And uh, now we just got to start a uh, putting this thing together. So select all the geometry, shift D to duplicate, rotate by 90 degrees. And you just want to line this up um, on the corner so that we have like, you know, two sides of the N. If you want this to line up exactly, uh, use the uh, vertex snapping, I believe. So snapping, vertex snapping, and this is going to let you do it more exactly, as you see. Um, although you want to make sure that this N isn't inverted. In this case, it's fine. If it was pointing the other way, that is a thing you'd need to fix. So duplicate, rotate 90 degrees, connect this to this, check that it's correct. It is beautiful. Last time, duplicate, rotate by 90 degrees, and connect. Okay, so now we have a four letter Ns. 
cool. Uh, one thing we need to fix with this is that all the geometry kind of looks a bit messed up, like because I didn't extrude this to be a perfect square in terms of the, the side or the whatever. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of duplication going on, so let's clean up this geometry. To do this, just select everything, type in merge by distance. Uh, which is going to merge any vertices that are within some distance of each other. Um, I'm going to take that distance and lower it or heighten it, make it bigger. It's so something like 0.01, and you can see 32 vertices have been removed, uh, which should be these four times eight plus some others, I guess. But you can see this removes a lot of the uh, duplicates, and if you're not sure, you can increase that even more. But I think 32 vertices is correct. Um, another thing we can do to fix this geometry a bit is with everything selected, hit X, run a limited dissolve, and that's just going to get rid of some of these, or it's going to create some n-gons and get rid of this uh, excess geometry. Now, uh, one thing I want to be very clear about, uh, this isn't technically topologically correct. Like there's faces overlapping on each other like this one. I could just like delete it and there's still stuff behind it. I'm going to ignore that but because it doesn't matter, but this isn't topologically correct. But we're going to render it in a way where you can't even see that. So uh, we have the sun. Let's uh, save this to a good name like untitled.blend uh, and give this thing a material. Uh, for the material, we want to get these like simple like red, blue, yellow, green colors. I don't know exactly what they're supposed to be. Uh, but I found a very easy and nice way to do this is you just use texture coordinates. And this is the, the cool trick. Use texture coordinates. You use the normal. Uh, where are they? Use the normal coordinates, and this will give you a you know a color for each face uh, because it's looking at the normal, basically the normal vector of each face. It's taking that and using that as the color of the surface, uh, which means any planar surface is going to have the same color. Uh, to get rid of some of these black surfaces, if you don't want those, you just take this uh, vector output. Again, it's normal coordinates. You take it and you just run an absolute value because some of those black areas had negative normal. Normal is pointing in the negative direction in some sense. Uh, so absolute value just rounds those, or not rounds those. It reflects it to the positive thing. Uh, either way, we now have a material, and uh, all we want to do with this is have it so that it only shows where the edges are, the silhouette, kind of like a a uh, wireframe kind of situation, which is more tricky uh, than you think. We're not actually gonna do this in shader uh, stuff. We're gonna do this in render settings. So uh, to do this, we're gonna abuse and use, probably not abuse, we're, we're gonna use freestyle uh, for this. Freestyle is the way that you get the wireframes and all this. Uh, we're gonna just use it to our advantage. Uh, so in the render tab, go to freestyle, enable freestyle. And um, if we were to render this right now, I guess I should show uh, what we get so far so I can show what we need to correct. If I'm gonna set up my camera like this, not too important. And I'm also in the layers tab going to output. Once we have freestyle enabled, I'm gonna have this be a render pass. Uh, when we render this, you can see in the uh, compositing, what we get so far is, you know, our render and then this uh, freestyle layer, which is almost correct, except it has lines here that we don't want. We want this whole end to be one thing. Um, it has lines here. Uh, we need to basically tell freestyle what lines to render, what lines to not, so that we can then use this as a mask for the color. You'll, you'll see how this comes about. Now, um, in all my experimentation, I actually could not find a good combination of border, contour, whatever, that gives us exactly what we want. That's because of this incorrect topology where we have like overlapping faces, uh, which you think isn't a big deal, but for freestyle it is. Um, so the solution I came up with is let's just mark them manually. So in the freestyle settings, just disable everything that was enabled and we're just going to replace this for edge mark, which basically says if we tell an edge to be marked, in other words, we tell freestyle to render it, uh, then it will. And in that way, we can get rid of the problematic edges. So um, edge mark, we're now going to take this, go into edit mode, select every single edge. So just uh, hit A to select everything, right click, mark freestyle edge. And you can see now these are all marked. So if we render it um, and we look at the compositing and we look at freestyle, you can see everything's there. Um, and now all we need to do is get rid of the problematic edges. So for example, this one, let's go into solid view. This one's problematic. This one's problematic and whatever you do, you just gotta kinda repeat it four times. Uh, but this way we are manually weeding out uh, these problematic edges that shouldn't be in the shading. So once we have this, you can just right click um, and then clear freestyle edge, which is still gonna preserve this part of it because this is a different face, but it's not gonna have this interior. Uh, so that's part one. And then part two is we also wanna fix this uh, interior part of the end thing. So select all of those and then clear freestyle edge. And I think, 
that should be literally marking the edges that we want. Uh, we can test this by doing a render. Um, again, it's gonna come out the same, compositing, and yeah, you can see the freestyle is now cleared up. Uh, so now what we wanna do is we somehow wanna combine these ideas where we have this like colorful N64 render, um, but we wanted to somehow inherit uh, the color only where you know the freestyle edges exist. So the way we do this is we wanna use this as an alpha for this image. So I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna separate by RGBA so I can literally look at the alpha channel of this. And what we are gonna do is for the uh, main image, you just run a set alpha. So it's basically saying original image, where should it show up? Uh, wherever this alpha channel exists. So boop, and you can see uh, now we've isolated these colors. Now, main issue is it's not glowing. There's no black background, it's not thick. Uh, we can solve all of these. So for the thickness, uh, just go to the freestyle settings. I guess that's in the render tab, freestyle. Take the line thickness and bump it up to three, which doesn't mean we need to re-render. Uh, but now you can see these lines are looking a bit thicker. And you can see we have two colors shared on an edge, which I think looks good. I don't know if it's technically correct, but whatever. Uh, set it up like that. Uh, I'm then going to give it a black uh, background, which we can do with an alpha overnode in the background make it black, you could select whatever shade of whatever you want for this, I'm just gonna do uh, straight black, so like that. Um, and then finally, we just wanna take this and make it glow. So throw, it, throw this through a glare node, order of operations does matter here, otherwise we have issues with alpha channel. Uh, for the glare, make it fog glow, bring down the threshold, that means everything is gonna end up glowing and we can increase the size. So here's before and here's after. So we've taken this main image and somehow filtered it in a way uh, that gives us this. And now finally, the last part of this is just, you know, setting up the camera the way you'd want to, et cetera. Uh, so for this, I'm just gonna like do it roughly. I mean, you can do this better for your version. I'm just gonna, I'm just showing you the main ideas here about how you'd make this effect. Uh, camera, zoom it in a little, and then uh, we wanna rotate this mesh, uh, which isn't centered, so we should make sure it's centered. Um, objects at origin, origin to geometry, lets us actually center it, which means we should probably uh, move the camera. And then to get this to spin, you just select it and you either hand animate the rotation or even easier, uh, you do a driver for this uh, rotation. So I'm thinking where I'm gonna type in hash frame, which gives you the frame number, take that divided by like five or something. Maybe that's a bit too fast. Divided by 10. There we go, that's a nice clean motion. Let's center our camera without snapping a tiny bit more. And there you go, the thing's rotating. So we could stop it on any frame like this one, render it, it's gonna do the processing. Anyways, uh, that, that is the uh, essence of the effect.